scheduled meeting of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. I'm Councilwoman Tracy Park, Chair of the Committee. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Councilman Park. Councilmember Park. Present. Councilmember McGoster. Here. Councilmember Sato Martinez. Here. Three members present and a quorum, Madam Chair. All right, thank you very much. So that brings us to public comment. Members of the public wishing to give public comment can sign up at the kiosk in the back of the room. You will be given one minute for general public comment and up to two minutes for multiple items. So with that, uh, if we could have someone, uh, Mr. City Attorney or Madam Clerk, go over the comment rules, we will go ahead and take public, pu public comment. Uh, as, the, as the Chair stated, you'll get one minute uh, for general public comment, two minutes for multiple agenda items. When speaking on uh, an agenda item, please be on topic. If you're speaking on general public comment, please address your comments to the general jurisdiction of this committee. Uh, if you get off topic, we'll give you one brief warning, and if you don't get back on topic, then your time will be forfeited. Okay. So if we could have the first speaker come up, please, Donald Harlan. You have one minute for general Hi. public comment and two minutes for multiple item for a total of Hi. three minutes. Yes, I'd like to speak on the agenda items one, two, three, four, five, uh, three, five, one, three, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm really concerned about the Port of Los Angeles. That's my property. It's not owned by the city of Los Angeles. Never has been. Never, ever. It's not owned by the state of California. Never, ever. Uh, there's a problem with that Board of Harbor Commissioners. There's a bunch of foreign agents in there trying to make deals at the port. You wonder why the supply chain came under attack or there was a big problem there. Look no further. Uh, there is a serious threat to national security. Uh, agenda item number two, I was concerned about some of the contracts you guys are making. I noticed some of the names that they're involved, that these are enemies to the United States you guys are making contracts with or you guys are giving jobs to. Literally, they want to attack and kill everybody in the United States. And they don't need jobs from you guys. I'm really concerned that over in the Port of Los Angeles, a lot of people showed up like that, those specific enemies. Uh, the Vincent, Th number five, uh, the Vincent Thomas Bridge doesn't need to be reconfigured. There's an attempt there to rearrange the off-ramp so they can fit an extra piece of parcel, parcel property or try and figure out who owns the property. Those people over there in the Port of Los Angeles are despicable. Uh, they don't belong there. Uh, all those new buildings they built over there are unlawfully built. I'd say most of the houses in that peninsula are like that. You guys have a real serious problem over there in the Port of Los Angeles. This isn't something for you guys to be fucking with. It's not something for you guys to be saying, hey, I want to build stuff. This is something very serious. The entire world's economy is jeopardized by you guys fucking around. Uh, those cruise ship companies need to go too. Well, I, I seen them breaking into the pipelines to steal oil. There's a big problem over there. I seen them undoing the pipelines, reconfiguring and stealing oil. Yeah, they don't have enough money to run their, their uh, uh, cruise ship business. They're in big trouble. Um, also, the airports, uh, there's some concern about uh, the who owns the airport and uh, whether or not somebody should be allowed to build there or whether or not somebody's allowed to sell concessions on agenda item number six. Uh, I'm really concerned about the contracts over by the airport. Uh, uh, there's a lot of international exposure and a lot of really, really bad guys. Uh, you guys aren't equipped to really even take on or understand. Uh, and uh, you know that there's a big immigration problem over the airport too. Uh, I would look at all these problems going on over there with the tourism business and I would be really concerned. I think that a lot of this stuff is being overdone. It maybe needs to be stopped. Uh, and uh, I don't like the uh, investments, the people that are investing over there, uh, they're no good. I have a big empty defense, defense industry over there. I have somebody trying to sell nuclear triggers to Disney in Raytheon, 
and there's no business in Raytheon. There hasn't never been. Those buildings have always been empty. Okay, Mr. Harlan, thank okay. you very much for your comments. Uh, next up, I think, is uh, Goat Puppet, please. What are you going to speak on today, Goat Puppet? Well, what are you going to speak on? <laughs> well, all the goddamn items in general comment. <laughs> all right, three minutes. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and again, we look at number six and seven, duty free. <laughs> Now, what the fuck does duty-free mean? <laughs> well, that means a bunch of rich foreigners come in and don't pay taxes on it. That's right, yes. Wouldn't it be nice if you would give Angelinos a duty-free shopping opportunity in the city? Get rid of that sales tax. Then it would be duty-free. Imagine how much people would come to the L.A. city and buy a car if a car was duty-free. <laughs> so what are you going to put in here? How about a car dealership? A duty-free... That's it! The Tracy Park duty-free car shop! <laughs> that's right. Right in Pat McOsker's backyard. How about that? <laughs> Let's give her a hand. Hey. <laughs> Why expand the limit? Let's have unlimited duty-free. So we will agree only if everything is duty-free, including cars and houses. <laughs> And then we have those bastards from Conoco 76. <laughs> Raising gas prices. Did you see today's gas prices? How high it's going? Why is it so high if the refinery is seven miles away from the customers? How come the same company charges $1.50 less for the same fucking gas 900 miles away from here? Why? Corruption? You're correct, yes. Corruption is one thing. But the other is people like Pat McOsker that sit there and drink those free beverages and stuffs his face, yum, 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 with all that free food and fails to recognize that these people are fucking your constituents per gallon of gas. Every 20 miles you drive costs you $5. Another $5. Another 5 <laughs> So the average slave, oh, excuse me, I mean commuter, from the Antelope Valley to here is paying an average of $5 every 20 miles for fuel, and Pat couldn't give a fucking shit. <laughs> Let's see here. Does Hugo care about that? He's for the people. No, no, he won't wear a tie because that's the, yeah, how come he doesn't wear a tie? Oh, well, that's the graphic. He's for the people, and he's rebelling against the system here. And he's, he's full of shit. <laughs> you should see that car he drives. It's electric, and he vapes inside of it. I have a picture, Tracy, where he can vape inside the car, and he has tinted glass. Look, he's doing it now. <laughs> yes. How come Goat Puppet can't vape inside here? Let's allow pot smoking at these meetings. <laughs> Yes, and again, the city's full of shit, but I have good news. Rick Caruso is in the building. All right, thank You're you. You're going to get a lot of checks today, Tracy. <laughs> See you next time. All right, next up, Greenspan. Anyone here signed up under the name Greenspan? Nope, going once, going twice. Okay, next up, Jeffrey. Can Jeffrey, we stop um, having some disturbances out there, please? Thank you. Go Puppet, can you please just keep down a little bit? It's really distracting. We'd like to hear from Jeffrey now. Jeffrey, what items would you like just to Just the general on? public, I think, or just All the right. one minute? Yeah. Um, Go Puppet, please. Second warning. Quiet. Go Puppet, stop. Jeffrey, the floor is yours. Okay, You've got thank one you. minute. Uh, this is my first time at... Uh, this uh, subcommittee, uh, I go to City Hall and I enjoy seeing the administration of the machine. Um, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about uh, trade, tourism, and uh, travel. Uh, but uh, from my looking around the room and kind of thinking about it, it seems like uh, you guys have opportunities to do nice things with the uh, identity, you could say, of Los Angeles among the global globe. Um, personally, I'm like a 
supporter of economic development in BRICS countries, also known as Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. So I would be in favor, for instance, of uh, trading with those countries in reasonable ways, perhaps, perhaps more than others in the room or outside of the room. So uh, I look forward to learning more about your administration. Thank you, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, it's your, you're up. Is that the one with 666? What items are you speaking on, please? Uh, all items and uh, non agenda public comment. That means I get three fucking minutes, right? Do you have three minutes? Go ahead. So, yeah, you know, item number one, for example, this fucking bullshit about California Energy Commission. Well, just right now, I said hello to Mr. Caruso, and he told me for the record, and I'm going to do it as a political stunt. Fuck you on your energy. There's no such thing as energy. If there was such a thing, why do we have so many fucking homeless people sleeping on our streets absorbing all our energy? Billions of dollars milked through this fucking agency. And then items six and seven, duty, looty, free. Duty, looty, booty is what you fucking people be doing with the structure for more flexible short-term concession opportunities. Fucking wet back like me can't even open a concession to South Hookah on, on the streets because you fucking idiots want to permit me. And then seven, build and sell contracts, tourism. Well, fucking nigger Tom Bradley never had that intention. Tom Bradley wanted white niggers like me to work. I'm not working. So what am I doing here? I'm protecting the interest of the public people through 310-477-6565, for the record, FBI. And why do I do this? Because no other Tim McCosker would dare tell the FBI, fuck you, I'm not going to do it your way, it's my way. No. And that's the reason Mr. Timmy there knows that tourism is all fucked up. And then you go to 5, Port of Los Angeles, I'm sorry, who's speaking? You, uh, Mr. Attorney, what'd you say? Someone in the audience. Go oh, ahead. I thought it was you. All right, thank you. So number five, the Port of Los Angeles design and service during the bid of construction. Well, we already know that the Department of Public Works, those dumb niggers that take these contracts, these bids, have been doing a terrible job. That's the reason why we have so many settlements and so many liability charges against the city because you force niggers to argue the fact of right and wrong. No offense to anyone who's black. I'm a black motherfucker, but a true wetback to nature. And I know when I'm being racially profiled by a Excuse jackass. The agenda, please, come on. Yeah, I, I got, I'm on my non-agenda fucking public comment. Stacy, what's your problem? I got three minutes. I'm on my fucking non-agenda public comment. And now you're going to ask me to stay on topic? I am. Tell her, Hugo. Kick her in the ass right there and tell her he is on topic. He got three fucking minutes. He's, he's debating on his mind why we got Vincent Thomas Bridge when you built a billion-dollar fucking bridge right behind you with all those fucking humps because you don't know what the fuck to do on Wednesday when you're humping yourself to work. Fuck you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Seeing no other speakers in the queue, that will conclude public comment. And unless there is any objection from my colleagues, I would like to move items one, two, three, and five on consent. I have some questions for two. Okay. Oscar? No other. Okay. Uh, we will uh, take some comments on item number two, and in that case, I will um, have one, three, and five on consent. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would, please call the roll. Call in the roll to take items one, three, and five together. Council Member Park? Yes. Council Member McCoster? Yes. Council Member Sato Martinez? Yes. Three members say yes. Those items are approved. Okay, with that then we will go ahead and call item number two. Do we have someone here from Port of Los Angeles on item two? Great. Item number two is a Board of Harbor Commissioners report relative to approving the First Amendment to Reimbursement Agreement 
number 203762 with Phillips 66 Company to reimburse the Port of Los Angeles Department 100% of staff and consultant costs associated with the preparation of the environmental assessment and administrative exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act under Article 2, Section 2F of the LA City CEQA guidelines. Thank you, Madam Clerk, for reading the item for us. And if we could have our reps from the Port of Los Angeles introduce themselves, give us a, a brief uh, update on this, and then we'll turn it over to questions to Council Member Soto Martinez. Thank you, Chair Park. Gene Soroka, Executive Director, Port of Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Mike DiBernardo, Deputy Executive Director at the Port of Los Angeles. Committee members, thank you very much for uh, this quarterly update opportunity from the Port of Los Angeles. You want to start off with that count, uh, oh, committee sure, member? Sure. Could you give me just, uh, I, I read the report. Could you just give me an explanation of what improvements are being done to those four uh, ports? Sure. Good afternoon, um, council member. Yes, uh, we're, we're uh, working on California state requirements to upgrade the wharves to meet state standards, which is the MOTEMs, the marine oil terminal improvements. So that's what this environmental document is for, is to upgrade their wharf to meet the state of California requirements. Are, are these uh, sort of those big tankers that, sh that come to the, the Port of Los Angeles? Uh, so they are oil tankers that come in and unload uh, oil products, yes. Uh -huh. Does is this increase their capacity to bring more oil into the region? At this point, no. It's, it's just to upgrade the wharf in order to meet the state of California standards. Okay. These are seismic standards, safety and security specifically, not volume inducing. So could you explain more what, when the standards came in and, and what they would do? Or what uh, they would let's see, I believe the standards came in, do you know, sir? It, it's, it's been a number of years that they've been uh, in place and they're giving time for each of the, the ports to upgrade the wharves to meet those standards. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. McCosker, any questions on item number uh, two, please? No, thank you. Okay, so with that, I would like to move that we approve item number two. Madam Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Council Member Park? Yes. Council Member McCosker? Yes. Council Member Soto Martinez? Yes. Three yeses. Item two is approved. Great, and so this takes us to um, item number four, and since you are already here at the table, uh, we are um, looking forward to hearing a report and an update. I apologize that we didn't get to see you in June, but we are glad that you are here with us today. So the floor is yours, Mr. Soroka. Can I briefly read the item into the oh, record yes, for the public? Madam Clerk. Item number four is an executive director, Port of Los Angeles, to provide verbal quarterly reports on the status of department activities. We also have a presentation that's been uploaded to the public council file. Great, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, I understand we just have a brief amount of time today, but staff across um, your areas has asked us to talk about the, uh, the following subject matter, an update on the cargo and the business of the port, the cruise industry specifically, our LA waterfront activation and investment, community events that are traditionally held and have been activated at the port complex, uh, an update from the standpoint of the air regulator in our Southern California region, the South Coast Air Quality Management Districts, indirect source rule. And then finally, some key projects that uh, Council Member McCosker and staff at the Port have been discussing around the McFarland Rail Line and the Lomita Boulevard projects. On the cargo side of our business, we had a tremendous June uh, of more than 833,000 container units. Uh, we're getting back to pre-COVID numbers on our cargo volume, which is extremely encouraging. The economy remains resilient. Uh, GDP numbers that came out last week at 2.4% growth, strong employment numbers, and inflation that has come down for the 12th consecutive month are all helping us with that cargo volume. The one area that is still concerning is that the country remains very high on its inventory levels. The St. Louis Fed, which monitors these levels, shows us at about a 1.40 rate. That means that we've got about 40% more retail and manufacturing inventory in warehouses across the country than we do sales that go out the door. So with elevated inventories, you still don't see the amount of cargo volume coming through the ports here in Southern California or nationwide that we normally would. But 
with a tentative agreement reached between our longshore dock workers and their employers association, those economic uh, tailwinds that we have, we see a better second half of the year than we do the first six months. Super encouraging there. On the waterfront projects, tremendous effort around the uh, San Pedro Waterfront Promenade Phase Number 2, which we just had a groundbreaking on with Council Member McCosker, uh, $31 plus million dollars of port investment and private investment coming from the West Harbor developers in that area. The Front Street Beautification Project continues and should be completed by the spring of 2024, making for a beautiful multi-path use and landscaping for all of our community to enjoy. Uh, the Wilmington Waterfront Promenade, set for completion later this year, we're targeting October. Feel really good about this 77 plus million dollar project, opening up more than 900 linear feet of waterfront property in Wilmington for shopping, retail, dining, and entertainment. And finally, the Avalon Pedestrian Bridge, which is part of activating that Wilmington community, has now received in total some $52 million in federal and state grants to help the Port of Los Angeles and the 1-5 district move forward with this $65 million project. So we've not only got great support here in the city, the council district, and from the Harbor Department, but we've got the federal and state government believing in what we're doing and activating that waterfront as well. So it's a really good story overall. Uh, one other piece on the cruise business, closing fiscal year 23, we had our best year ever for cruise business, 237 vessel calls. And that means about a quarter billion dollars in GDP that goes to our local community within a two mile radius. Think of the small shops, restaurants, the hotels. We're the largest drive market here in Southern California for the cruise industry nationwide. This is a big deal for that industry and it's an even bigger deal for our local businesses and community. Public events are also a cornerstone of what we try to do at the Port of Los Angeles and activated once again this summer, beginning with our Fleet Week on Memorial Day weekend, which you attended uh, Chair Park, in addition to our Cars and Stripes festivities around the 4th of July. Our count shows that we had about 10,000 visitors for Cars and Stripes, including fireworks over that weekend. We then followed up with just this past uh, couple of weekends, the Sail Grand Prix, which is sponsored by Oracle. These are 60-foot catamarans that have a six-heat race televised to more than a billion people worldwide and 175 million nationwide via CBS here in the United States. So a tremendous first-time event ever, brought about 5,000 local spectators out to the waterfront and our Berth 46 at the Outer Harbor. Also looking at the waterfront, coming up here next will be our return of the Insomniac uh, Music Festival. We expect 20,000 people to come out. And these are all diverse crowds of interest from our local community members to folks in the region and broader communities that are driving in, which means a lot to us, again, both economically and to build that great brand of the LA waterfront in San Pedro and on the regulatory front, as I mentioned, the South Coast Air Quality Management District is studying a regulation that would put a cap on port emissions using various means, whether they be greener technologies or volume caps on the port. We've been working for a number of years with the Air Quality Management District staff to try to craft a way that we can accelerate emissions reductions same time while balancing ec the economic impacts of the port and the jobs overall. I am hopeful that we'll continue to keep talking and working, but a cap on port volume will lead to other eventualities, and we've got to be uh, really clued into this with both the regulatory authorities as well as the folks who manufacture equipment, tiered suppliers, et cetera. And while we're working diligently on 18 different pilot projects with over 200 pieces of equipment, I report to you that right now new zero emission technology for cargo handling equipment and heavy duty trucks remain in nascent stages. Our efforts every day are attempts to accelerate this technolo technological development and find the funding sources, both private sector and public sector, to make these pieces of equipment commercially available. Very important. Half of our truckers 
in the port community. Half of the 20,000 truckers who are registered to do business are small business people. And that's classified in the state of California as five rigs or less. Most are Gen Zero and Gen One Americans. And the average wage of a trucker that does business in the port complex is about $67,000. They typically buy their trucks on the third hand market for about $50,000 US. The newer trucks, again, early days pre-production, started about $450,000 plus associated infrastructure. So we've got to go all out as a city, state, port, and with our private sector partners to accelerate this work. You have our commitment, our resolve has never been stronger. And finally, on uh, joint city projects, some work that the council member, port staff, and I have been uh, discussing diligently. Two big projects. One is the McFarland Rail Line that runs straight through our neighborhoods in Wilmington. And the council member asked, uh, McCosker specifically, asked that we develop a study around quiet zones. Trains typically have to honk their horns as they're going through neighborhoods or crossings where pedestrian and vehicular traffic will move. The idea of a quiet zone is to put down the necessary protections of gates and lights and every other methodology possible to draw the public's attention to upcoming and departing trains, but without using that whistle, without using that horn that really, really can be very loud and troublesome for families, businesses alike. So we're working on that study specifically, and we think we have a clear pathway to be able to develop. The technology is there, the capabilities and the process management exist today, and those best practices can be replicated in Wilmington. But we'll make sure we have the documentation to back up our beliefs. We're also looking at the Lamita Boulevard punch through as, as defined by Council Member McCosker. And that's the ability to drive industrial traffic across the east-west corridor without having to go into our local neighborhoods. Now this crosses from Lamita to Los Angeles County to Carson and back into the city of Los Angeles. So it's a multi-jurisdiction effort that we're happy to work on together and under the council members leadership, we believe we can get the necessary folks to the table that need to be in on these discussions. We'll do a study on this along with Los Angeles Department of Transportation and other agencies. Both studies will be paid for by the Harbor Department and we've got experts that are going all out in the areas of engineering and road design, et cetera, to get us to the necessary details so we can make good public policy decisions. And Madam Chair, that concludes my update here for this afternoon. Well, as always, Mr. Soroka, it's uh, wonderful to hear from you. And I just want to thank you and commend you uh, for your leadership on some incredible capital improvement projects, certainly the Ports Initiatives on sustainability and transportation. Um, I, I just want to commend you as well for the fantastic job that you are doing to invest in and expand tourism with the waterfront project and the cruise lines. Um, I, I, this is the kind of work that really opens up different parts of our city to different communities and it is economic development work that means a lot to me uh, and, and frankly ought to mean a lot to uh, all of the council members. You have an incredible champion in your council member from the 15th <laughs> district. And I wanted to um, also just mention that it was wonderful to have the partnership bringing Fleet Week to Venice. Now that was the first time we had the opportunity to do that. The events were incredibly well attended and really reinforced how connected different parts of our city are. And I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to do that. And I welcome the chance to continue those efforts to bring a flavor of the port to other parts of our city. So thank you for that. Um, I'd like to turn it over to my colleagues on the committee, Mr. McCosker. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Soroka. I really appreciate the presentation and appreciate working with you. Uh, just a couple of comments and then give you an opportunity to talk about something else really cool that we worked on that you were at today. Uh, but when we look at the quiet zones, mm -hmm. um, I, I know we're looking very specifically at the McFarland Lane uh, line and, and Wilmington, but I want to make sure that we are basically creating a model that we can use citywide yeah. with yeah. other funding sources because we have the issue in Watts, we have the issue in the Valley, we have the issue across the city. Mm -hmm. It's not unique. It's more impact. It's very impactful in Wilmington, but it's not unique to um, uh, to the one five. Um, and on, um, you know, on that, uh, on the, on the uh, punch through, I mean, I, I really want to be really clear. I appreciate what you said about the study. 
the idea with this is that you'll be putting together a study, basically the type of material that we can fly to D.C. and yes. talk to our partners in D.C. and in Sacramento, because this is going to be, uh, you know, half a billion dollars, this is, or, you know, making that number up, but this is going to be a gigantic cost, and it's not going to be a cost borne by the by the city or entirely by the city. It's going to be a cost that is part of the uh, regional infrastructure for moving goods. It also has a deep equity and uh, uh, and respect and, and social justice aspect because it's taking trucks out of the residential neighborhoods of Wilmington, the trucks that we all cost every time we go online and buy something. Uh, so it's really important to me. Uh, finally, I just want to give you a chance to talk about the, uh, the crane that we saw today at, uh, at the uh, recycling facility that was all electric. Can you tell us a little bit yeah, about it? Yeah, this was tremendous. Uh, the councilman and I attended, along with many others, uh, the unveiling of the first electric crane that will move scrap metal and product from land side to ships for international transportation. Uh, Terry and George Adams, who own SA Recycling in Wilmington, can read you chapter and verse as to how much recycling helps remove uh, carbon and greenhouse gases and necessitates the recycling industry to stay away from further mining for iron and other products that go into uh, making buildings and other industrial infrastructure. This is the first of five cranes in the world to be electric. And if you could imagine in your mind's eye, we'll send you all some pictures, but it takes 20 wheels to stabilize this crane because of the torque and the resistance that it needs to lift this heavy product and move it from shore side to ship side. But just a tremendous show here from, number one, the Environmental Protection Agency, who Mike DiBernardo and other staff from the port worked on very diligently in order to get the grant funding necessary. And as you know, nascent technology typically costs more. We need to find different partners coming together in order to mobilize these pieces of equipment. But it was the Adams uh, brothers that put together this plan and stepped out well ahead of their competition to prove what a zero emission crane could look like at the port. So it's pretty awe-inspiring and to see the uh, the group of people out there, the representation from other elected leaders at the state county level was very inspiring today. Yeah, thanks very much. All and one thing that I overlooked, I spoke too fast trying to get you guys out of here on time today. Um, the council member and I have discussed about our public access investment plan. This is still one of the first in the country to designate a public agency's operating income, like the Port of Los Angeles, to community infrastructure and visitor serving efforts. So in this case of the Port of Los Angeles, we designate a minimum of 10% of our operating income to projects like this to welcome folks to our waterfront, retail, dining, entertainment, movies, shows, et cetera. One topic that's come up that's been really big is the relocation of the USS Battleship Iowa Museum away from its current location near the World Cruise Center down to the Southern Pacific Slip so we can have a more contiguous waterfront of activities. It's going to come with a really high ticket price and a lot of work that needs to be done on dredging and the physical movement of a battleship that size. But we're going to be working in conjunction with the council members, staff, and office on some public outreach as to how we want to manage this one big project with respect to the public access investment plan. There are folks in our community that don't want to see this public access money go to just one project. They have multiple interests. So we want to be sensitive to that. But more importantly, get that community feedback so the plans of the community align with the port. More importantly, the plans of the port align with the community. So I appreciate all the time today, as always, and happy to come back whenever you feel appropriate for updates at the port. Thank you. And I, and I will, of course, be pushing for the uh, USS Iowa to be moved outside of the, uh, outside of the PAIP funding. Um, uh, but we will talk to the community, and we'll make sure that we get that done. Yeah, and the port remains at your service to try to do things the right way, especially with this waterfront development that has so much momentum going for it right now. Thank you. Awesome to see. Uh, Councilmember Soto Martinez? Of course. No? Okay. All right. Well, thank since you all we very much. are, thank you very much, Mr. Soroka. Since we are keeping this item in committee, there is no action uh, for us to take at this time, which belie I believe brings us to items six and seven, which we will hear together. So, Madam Clerk, if you would read the items for us. 
Item number six is a Board of Commissioners report relative to appro approving the Sixth Amendment to Concession Agreement LAA 8640 and Eighth Amendment to Concession Agreement LAA 8613 with URW Airports LLC at Los Angeles International Airport to allow URW Airports LLC to structure more flexible short-term concession opportunities return unusable spaces and enter into a limited duty-free concession agreement in the Tom Bradley International Terminal and categorical exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to Article 3, Class 118C of the LA City CEQA guidelines. Item number seven is a Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to approving a sixth amendment to the concession agreement LA a8647 with DFS Group LP to allow DFS Group to return space on a case-by-case -case basis due to changes in international passenger traffic and airline relocations and extend the term by five years to support DFS Group LP's investment to expand duty-free luxury retail offerings in the Tom Bradley International Terminal and categorical exemption from the CEQA pursuant to Article 3, Class 118C of the LA CEQA guidelines. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Jones, I'm excited for an update on concessions and, and other things at LAWA, so maybe you can walk us through these. Yeah, good afternoon, Council Members. I'm excited to be here to talk about these uh, two items, which work well together to uh, really improve the concession program at um, LAX. And, you know, what we've seen since these agreements were executed is that things have changed, and so we're being adaptive uh, to reflect the current environment out there. So as introduced, there's two items, item six and seven. I won't uh, repeat that stuff. I scratched that off my, my notes here. Um, but definitely the idea is to allow underperforming concession spaces to be repurposed um, in response to the changes that we've seen. So going back to 2012 when these were originally um, let, these, these agreements, with URW, their agreement is to manage the food and beverage and retail um, in terminals one, two, three, six, and the Tom Bradley International Terminal. So not all of them, just that, that group. Um, and they actually don't operate any of the unions. They, they act as a, um, a landlord uh, managing and a developer that's managing. They don't uh, operate any of the units. Instead, they do that through subleases that they have. But they're expressly prohibited from doing duty-free operations um, simply because we have a separate contract with duty-free that provided them that right. And so the duty-free agreement was also uh, executed in 2012. And they operate in terminals 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the Tom Bradley International Terminal. The DFS footprint is really focused on Tippett, though. That's their flagship. That's their largest operation. That's most of the international traffic goes through. Uh, terminal 2 used to be an international terminal, and so therefore it had a fairly large, substantial um, concession for the duty-free operator as well. And the remaining lo uh, locations are really just satellite uh, that offer limited duty-free merchandise for the intermittent flights that operate out of those terminals. But of course, as I mentioned, things have changed. Um, and due to airline relocations, the main thing happening when the international traffic moved out of Terminal 2 into the Tom Bradley International Terminal, that's left the DFS location um, oversized and underutilized. And likewise, at the same time, when Delta moved into that facility, a lot more domestic traffic going through there, which changed the, the passenger demographic and also changed the, the needs of the passenger. A lot more food and beverage services are needed. And so Duty Free is willing to give up that space. Um, and um, turn that into what we are hoping to be to expand the food court uh, working with URW to do that. Likewise, in the Tom Bradley International Terminal, when this was originally let, there was a substantial um, specialty retail island which is adjacent to the duty-free spaces. And this has proven a little bit confusing for the passengers as they're surrounded by all these DFS boutiques but then right in front of them it's non-DFS. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed that those locations have underperformed uh, relative to the duty-free spaces. Duty Free has expressed interest in subleasing those spaces from URW, and they plan to invest $15 million to upgrade those facilities, bring in some high-value uh, high brands that are going to resonate with the international passenger that's looking for duty free products, um, as well as completely renovate and create a more holistic and centralized DFS or duty free node in that terminal. So instead of having, you know, just Parts of it, the entire area would be focused on duty-free, which we think is going to be really helpful. 
One other thing that we've noticed on um, that we've been working on is that there's really high cost to operate at the airport. And so we've been working with our partners, mainly URW, to try to find ways to reduce those costs. And so unfortunately, their agreement is very specific in terms of how they can sublet agreements uh, for, for the concessionaires. And so this amendment will provide them more flexibility that they can present shorter term um, offerings with different rent structures that we think will be more attractive to the small and local businesses and, of course, our uh, ACDEU partners. So we're very excited to have that uh, potential as well. Um, so in summary, the, the whole concept of these two amendments um, is to expand the duty-free offering by repurposing approximately 5,000 square feet of space, to update and refresh the duty-free Olympics, uh, duty-free spaces in time for the Olympics, um, repurpose space to add additional food and beverage, provide flexibility to expand participation in small and local businesses, and then extend the DFS agreement by five years to provide an appropriate time for them to amortize the investment. So happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for the update on that. I can tell you just um, from having spent some time recently um, at LAX and seeing some of the reconfiguration going on and having also spent some time uh, traveling back through Bradley in the last couple of weeks, uh, I think that the, the timing of realigning some of this really makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the things that I am excited about is LAWA's commitment to uplift our small and minority owned businesses. So I'm wondering if you can talk to us a little bit about community engagement and outreach that you're doing to the local business community uh, to educate them about opportunities to do business uh, in connection with this. Yeah, we have a small business um, outreach team that is actually always actively doing that. Unfortunately, we don't always have opportunities on the street uh, for you know, um, new, new upcoming opportunities. So as we're gearing up, looking forward to you know, the opportunities that may be coming, um, we are definitely going to be doing a lot of outreach for that. But that doesn't mean that we're not constantly out there looking uh, and doing some things like that. Uh, for example, I brought an, an ACDBE a potential business through the other day to meet with DFS because they were looking for new merchandise and things that could be put in. So it's something that we actively do. I was in um, Terminal 3 and we had some um, local business who makes cookies there the other day and it was just great to see that women-owned business in there really, re really embedded and having an opportunity to bring products, uh, local products, to the marketplace at the airport. So thank you for that update. Um, you know, just curious, if URW surrenders its concession space, are we anticipating any kind of revenue impacts from that? Um, URW is not planning to surrender right now. Okay. The, the, the amendment allows them to request to drop spaces that may become um, unuseful in the future. We've seen this happen with some of the construction where things have been reconfigured. Um, and so this, this amendment is just providing them that opportunity. Um, so in, in for, to answer your question directly, yes, that would mean less revenue, but it would mean you're not having a business that's struggling um, and putting them in a, in a position where they would not be able to meet the, the rent requirements, et cetera. So that's something that we would be willing to forego that rent in order for a business not to um, have to go under. Okay, well, thank you for that, because my follow-up was going to be, if that did happen, yep. what kind of measures would we take to address it? Yep. So, okay, well, good. And well, then at the same time, there's always, you know, we're always looking for additional spaces that could potentially be let as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, um, thank you very much for that. Um, Council Member McCosker, any questions? No, I appreciate the report. It's, gr it's great to keep reassessing and making sure the spaces are efficient and good for the traveler and also good for the local business businesses. So I appreciate all of your efforts. Thanks. No, just thank you for your report. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that. I would like to move that we approve item six. Um, and I think that there is a technical correction uh, in the summary section of the CAO report. The expiration dates for terminals three and six, I believe, should read June 30th, 2034, the same as terminal one. Uh, so with that correction, I would like to move that we approve item six. If you would, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Call in the roll to approve item six as amended on the CAO report. Council Member Park? Yes. Council Member McCosker? Yes. Council Member Soto Martinez? Yes. This item is approved as amended. All right, I think we need to do that also for item number seven, please. Uh, the same amendment to the expiration date or just a regular approval? Same, same amendment if it's no if it's not in two places not on not on seven just six thank okay. you
Calling a roll to approve item number seven as is. Council Member Park? Yes. Council Member McCosker? Yes. Council Member Soto Martinez? Yes. The desk is clear, Madam Chair. All right. Well, thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. We'll see everybody next time.